Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, Man, who made me a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care and be on your guard against all covetousness. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of one's possessions. And he told them a parable, saying, The land of a rich man produced plentifully. And he thought to himself, What shall I do, for I have nowhere to store my crops? And he said, I will do this. I will tear down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul is required of you. And the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So is the one who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. If any man or woman doubts that the Bible is relevant to our time, he or she should read this parable. Mm. This parable deserves to be read on primetime TV before Coronation Street or EastEnders. It deserves to be put on the entrance doors of Tesco, Morrison's and Asda. It should be placed on our pillows so that we read it before going to sleep at night. Mm. It has always been relevant but never more so than now in our Mm. affluent materialistic age, where that is all that fills people's minds are things. And let none of us here this afternoon think that we are immune to the influences, the fashions and teaching of our society. It is easy for us to be taken with the flow of our self-indulgent times. Jesus begins with a solemn warning. Watch out. Be on your guard against greed of every description. There's a killer out there you can't afford to ignore. You need to watch out and be on your guard against it. What is it? Greed. The thirst for having more, more Mm. things, more possessions, more money, more honour, more prestige, more power, more pleasure, more ease. Jesus Mm. adds, for a man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. Memorise that verse, friends. Print it and put it on your front door, put it on your TV, put it on your phone. A man's life, that is, the life that matters, does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. The world says it does. Your neighbour says it does. TV adverts say it does. The government say it does. The sinful heart, your sinful heart, says it does. The devil says it does. Jesus says it doesn't. Who do you believe? Mm -hmm. Then comes the parable. There's only one character. Only one. Because he is the only one that matters Mm -hmm. in his selfish outlook. A rich man. He's rich. Because the ground he has produces good crops. And he's had another bumper crop. What shall I do? For I have nowhere to store my crops. And he said, I will do this. I will tear down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain 
and my goods, and I will say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. This is the man who believes that a man's life does consist in the abundance of his possessions. It depends on crops and barns and getting bigger barns. It depends on cars and wine and smartphones and nice holidays. The man or woman who plans for the future, for retirement. I'll be able to relax, eat, drink and enjoy life. This is the man who'd be, who'd be congratulated in our society. He or she would be esteemed, look up at. They'd be knighted, invited into schools to give talks to young people. Perhaps you were just like this man. Perhaps a scaled down version. Perhaps your bands are not as big. But your philosophy, your thoughts, your wishes are exactly the same. Verse 20. I said at the beginning, there's only one character. That's not true. There is another. There is always another. Verse 20. But God said. God. But God said. You fool. The world says. Congratulations. The world says. You've done well. But God says. You fool. Why? This very night. They will ask your soul of you. You're going to die. What help will your bonds be to you? What help will your possessions be to you? Your soul is demanded. Friend, can I ask you politely? Is God calling you a fool? You've planned... You've thought that you have many years. You've thought that you have it all worked out. But God says, God says, tonight your life is ended. What of your soul? Jesus sums up the parable's main lesson. So is the one who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. Why was he a fool? He was not rich towards God. There's nothing wrong with riches as such. Nothing wrong with possessions. We need things. There's nothing wrong with planning for the future as such. What's foolish is pinning your hopes on these things. What's foolish is letting these things govern you. These things dominate you. Believing these things are everything. What's senseless is believing that life consists in the abundance of your possessions. What's mm. important? This. Are we rich towards God? What's our account with God? <clears throat> what of spiritual possessions? What assets do we have as far as God and eternity are concerned? We all have an account with God. Whether we realise it or not is immaterial. We all have an account with God. I'm sure that all of you have bank accounts with Barclays, or Lloyd's TSB, or the HSBC. Perhaps you have more than one account. And tomorrow morning you could go to the bank and inquire regarding your bank balance. How much is there in that account? You have an account with God. Did you know that? Every one of you. 
you have an account with God. And when you die, it matters nothing how much is in your Barclays or HSBC account. It may matter to your children, but it'll matter nothing to you. When you die, what will matter will be your account with God. How much is there? The rich man in the parable was not rich towards God. There was nothing in the account. Nothing. Nothing. No wonder God calls him a fool. Not rich towards God. Friend, are you listening? How about you this afternoon? How healthy is your bank account this day? You may say, well, I have thousands in my bank account. Well, excellent. Now, what about your heavenly account, if I could put it that way? What about God's account? How much there? Could it be like the man in the parable? You don't have as much as a penny in God's account. As far as God is concerned, you are poor, destitute, wretched. Mm. Friend, what if you should be called tonight? What if you should die tomorrow? You are not ready. What if the first words you hear on the day of your death should be these words? You fool. Look at your account. Zero. Nothing. Nothing. How do we become rich towards God? By becoming a Christian. What's a Christian? A Christian is a person whose account with God is full. What do mm. I mean? I mean this. It's not just that there are pennies there, or pounds, or hundreds, or even thousands. The balance is full, immeasurable, boundless, limitless, inexhaustible. He or she is rich towards God. Because he or she has been good? No. Because of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because of his work. His redeeming work. Because of what he did on Calvary, our balance account has come from him. He has bought us the bank. We are rich. They are his riches. You remember Paul's words. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for our sake, he became poor, so that you, by his poverty, might become rich. Are you rich, or are you a fool? You're either a billionaire in God's sight, or you have nothing, no other option. Come this afternoon to God's bank of grace and get rich. Come with nothing and leave with everything. Amen.